friends, my name is Al or Atlas Starnard on Instagram and welcome to today's episode of Still Gay. Today we're doing my favorite thing ever and we're taking a piece of famous art and making it gay, baby. I asked my patrons which piece they'd like to see me draw this week and La Belle Dame Sans Merci by Frank Dixie got the most votes. I have so many like pictures of old art set aside and like on my phone and stuff to one day make gay. Uh, but I have to say this piece is one of the ones that I've been most excited and most scared to do. This painting is so like, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I've wanted to recreate it for quite a while, but again, it's so beautiful. And I've also, I've seen so many other artists do such a good job at recreating it that it's like, it's, it's just really intimidating. So I'm not going to lie. I was afraid when my patrons picked this painting to do. Uh, but you know, it, you know, it's fine. I thought it'd be fun to kind of like go through the history of the painting. Like maybe that can be a thing now that I do when I do make a gaze. Like we can do a little art history segment. I'm gonna, well, let's try it, you know? Um, not that they'll be necessarily like guaranteed accurate or anything considering, you know, I've never taken a proper art history class in my life and um, they'll be entirely based on Google searches. But you know the drill, take everything I say with a grain of salt, like always, 100% of the time, and we can have a great time trying our best to learn something new, maybe. <laughs> Before we start, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. We all know and love Skillshare, but if you somehow don't know about them, you will once I tell you all about it. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community built to help you follow your passions and cultivate your creativity. It's got thousands of classes about just about any topic you could think of, woodworking, oil painting, photography, graphic design, whatever your heart desires, it's got it for you. In preparation for today's video, I'm currently watching Engage with Art, Learn to Read the Visual Language of the Masters by Marie H. Tropes Zanzal, which is helping me learn how to understand and interpret artistic masterpieces beyond the surface level. Hi, my name is Marie Trobe Zanzal. I am Skillshare is made specifically to help you learn, which means that there are no ads to distract you and there are always new premium classes to keep you going. The first 1,000 people to use my link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure to check out that link. It really helps out me and my channel. And thank you again so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now on to the video. So there are a bunch of well-known paintings called La Belle Dame Sans Merci, which was very confusing for me when I was trying to find like the name for this painting because I had the screenshot and then I was trying to find the name. Um, like I wasn't sure that it was necessarily the correct painting because a bunch of paintings showed up for La Belle Dame. Um, but the, it definitely is. It's the right, the right name, the right painting. And the reason for the popularity of the name is because the subject of those paintings are based on the famous poem by John Keats of the same name, which was written in 1819, which got its name from a French ballad by Elaine Chatier from 1424. <laughs> Um, I read Keith's poem and I absolutely fell in love. I'm not huge on poetry, but that poem is like the sweet spot for what I'm interested in. Interested in? Hello? I was going to read the ballad by Chartier, but oh my god, it was so, so long. Ballads are stupid. Ballads are too long. Um, but I figured, you know, maybe, maybe later, maybe never, who knows. But anyways, Keats' poem is essentially about this knight who meets a fairy woman who he sets on his horse and she sings to him and then they bang probably. I don't know, it's not clear, but I'm sure they bang. And then he falls asleep and he has this creepy nightmare where he realizes that the woman has taken him prisoner and now he's trapped on this hillside and the poem kind of circles from the opening as being like, hey bro, like what's wrong? And then he's like, I'll tell you what's wrong. And you know, that's why, that's what's wrong. Uh, it's, it's a really cool poem. Um, it's, you know, very classic fairy medieval vibes, which we stand. Apparently, like, it's, the poem is like a, about death and horror, which, you know, I'm really dumb. I'm not good at understanding or analyzing poetry, which is why I'm really not that into it. But let me tell you, I did not pick up on any of those death vibes when I read it the first time. <laughs> but then I reread it with all that in mind. And like, I read some analyses of the poem and I found that that made it even better. If I'm gonna leave an analysis of the poem in the description below, I definitely suggest you read it. It has like a modern translation of it in like a, it's, like you know modern phraseology and it's really interesting it's a really cool poem it's a very interesting story to be taken along i really enjoyed it and you should check it out so anyways about the painting specifically 
I'm assuming that this specific moment, and this is kind of backed up by some of the articles that I read, it's it's depicting the fairy woman, La Belle Dame, as she's on the knight's horse and singing to him, and I'm assuming kind of putting him under her spell, kind of, you know, entrapping him. What I love about this painting specifically of all La Belle Dame paintings is the knight's really strange pose. Like I thought, I think it's so striking the way he's kind of like, he literally seems as if he is stricken. Um, and now understanding like what the painting is actually depicting, I think it puts that pose into context and it makes a lot more sense. Um, and it's, it's certainly very visually pleasing. It adds a lot of like, we, it's very rigid, but it's also like this dynamic fluidity of the painting, um, of the pose. And I really, I really, really like it. I think it's also a bit of like a juxtaposition of like his weird rigidity and like this weird pose compared to this very soft background and like the flowing of her dress and hair. It's, I love it. I love the visual. I'm, I'm really into it. <laughs> the painting was done in 1901 by Sir Francis Bernard Dixie nice name, who mainly did artwork similar to this as well as portraits. The painting is oil on canvas and it's about 54 by 74 inches and it took about three years to complete. Not 100% sure on that time period. Um, I only found one article that mentioned anything like that and it said it was completed in 1903 so we're gonna go with three years or I guess two years. Three years? Two years? Two years, right? I don't know. In the research I did, a couple sources pointed out that Dixie chose to represent the poem with like a magical and enchanting vibe instead of the dark, horrific themes of the source poem. The knight, again, making sense of that pose, is obviously infatuated by La Belle Dame. And the power obviously lies with her. She's leaning over the knight, looking down on him, steering the horse on her own. In the poem, the knight sits in front of her on the horse. In this painting, however, we see a physical representation of the power imbalance. One article pointed out something that I found really interesting, which is that La Belle Dame is no damsel in distress, to quote the article. Although she's seemingly in that position, it's a romantic painting with a knight apparently guiding a woman on his horse, she's very clearly not in distress. This also ties into a common theme of art of the 19th century, the love for chivalry and knighthood, and the, to quote, cautionary note of the femme fatale. Calling La Belle Dame a femme fatale is an interesting, but I think fairly accurate label for her. A couple of articles I referenced mentioned the immense detail put into the background of the painting, including some imagery from the poem, but personally, as someone who again is not very good at analyzing things, I'm not super sure what significance this has on the story told in the painting. The only thing I can really think of of it being remarkable that the background is detailed, I think a lot of 19th century paintings have like detailed backgrounds and settings. The only significance I can really see is that it adds to that atmosphere of being whimsical and magical and light and romantic rather than like the horrific nightmare death vibes that the poem has. So there we go. There's some background about the painting and some in-depth detail about its subject. Now I'm going to tell you a bit about like my own process in recreating it. I did a poll on Instagram asking if I should feature a Malama relationship or a Wolowa relationship. Sorry, I'm gonna keep saying Malama and Wolowa. I, that's the only way my brain processes it. Um, anyways, Wolowa won out by a long shot. I obviously love representing <laughs> Wolowa characters, but I think I've only done one make it gay with men and I kind of want to even out that ratio like a little bit, just like a little bit. <laughs> but I will say I'm glad that this specific piece was Wolowa because now that I've actually drawn it, I think it never would have been the same without her dress and hair, which of course anyone could have, not to say that only a woman could have the hair and the dress but when a drawing is like so small like this was like not even an 8x10 I kind of have to be a bit more like binary in my representations just to make it more clear because like otherwise those details could be lost and it might not be clear that I'm trying to make some gay shit happen you know what I'm saying like it's the figures are very small and the only reason you, like it my skills only go so far in that they're not that good and so if i'm if i'm forced to draw a male face that small and it's in a, it might not be obvious that it's a guy you know what i'm saying that's all i'm trying to say that's all i'm trying to say i was super super obsessed with my sketch <laughs> it it took quite a few tries for me to do something that i was satisfied with but once i did oh my god i was so happy i took a picture of it but i kind of wish i had like made a copy or something so i could keep it properly <sighs> the faces were just so crisp like it was really good. Like I was really, I really liked that sketch. I didn't want to do the piece in marker because I just felt like that it was going to take a really, really long time. And my markers are all like kind of dried out right now. 
not all of them, but like enough that it's like tedious to use them. I also thought that the painting was a bit too whimsical and soft to use gouache, at least the way that I use gouache, it just wouldn't have worked. So I ended up going with watercolor and then adding detail with colored pencil. This piece definitely took a while to complete and I got pretty exhausted doing it. So I kind of rushed the watercolor part. I very, very rarely do stuff besides portraits and watercolor. So this was a bit difficult, a bit beyond my comfort zone, which added to the tiring, tiring me out. But we got there eventually. I was kind of worried for most of the middle part. Well, that's not even true. I was, besides the sketch and like the very end of the painting, I was pretty worried. I was pretty worried for most of the actual painting and drawing process. It just, it just was not going the way I wanted. I couldn't really get like the tones that I wanted in the skin. And then later I literally just like forgot. Well, okay, I didn't really forget. Like I kept backing myself into a corner with the skin tones and then eventually just kind of gave up. So like, I was, I was planning for La Belle Dame to have a rather dark, warm skin tone, but then like the warmth, I realized that the warmth wouldn't work because of her dress being so pink. I like the painting itself, both of the skin tones are rather yellow and I didn't want to lose that because that would really mess up. Like she wouldn't stand out from the dress. Um, and then the night, my intention was to represent her as Asian, but I don't think I really accomplished that. And I didn't want to make, the night skin too dark because again she's in the armor and I wanted her and she's like surrounded by like the dark hair and she had dark hair and I wanted to make sure there was enough contrast and then it, it they, I kind of just lost my intention with both of them <laughs> due to poor planning as always um so good good job me the piece definitely started to come together with the colored pencil which I used a lot more of than I thought I would probably due to the lack of effort when doing watercolor <laughs> but I actually really like the combination of the watercolor and color pencil it has great texture I'm definitely loving texture in art I feel like I say that in almost every video where I'm like oh I love the texture that this has with this so maybe I should just start planning my pieces around texture <laughs> I kept going back to like color in the horse, probably has about a thousand layers on it, but I couldn't really get it dark enough. And honestly, I didn't think it looked bad being very washed out. I think it kind of added to the vibe of like the whimsical, like also the fact that it's not the focus. So it didn't need to be, I like I liked it. I didn't mind that it was really washed out. The background, I definitely lost it with the background. Uh, I planned on going back later and kind of fixing it and like adding depth, um, but surprise, surprise, I was too lazy. But besides those few things, like the skin tones, the horse, the background, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I don't think it's the best thing I've ever done. It's not the best make it gay I've ever done, but I'm definitely satisfied with it, especially it being a painting that I was very intimidated to recreate and thought that there were a lot of opportunities for me to fail. Um, I didn't mess up any of the things that I was scared of messing up, you know, so I'm going to consider that a win. I would love to try again one day but for now I'm really pleased with it I'm happy with how it turned out and where I went with it so win in my book so yeah there's another episode of make it gay I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you to my patrons for helping me figure my stuff out check out all my stuff in the description I've got some stuff about the painting down there link to the poem and an analysis uh, plus you know my patreon Instagram editor all that jazz check out all those links like the video subscribe comment all that fun stuff go take a nap watch your favorite movie scrub your toilet and go do some art bye guys